Well, good morning, everybody. And happy Father's Day to all of you fathers and father figures out there. I am Reverend Kelly Kincaid, the Senior Minister of Unity of Farmington Hills, and I want to welcome you all to our Father's Day Sunday service. I also want to give a shout out to our music team for that beautiful way that you led us in opening the, the in the opening congregational song. Good, Good Father is one of my favorite songs that you all sing. So thank you, Nicholas, who is our music director on the piano, Laurel, Carl Schluter, Bernard, Michael, Carl Clace in the back on the guitar, and Lauren on the back on the drums. Thank you all for that beautiful performance. And now I'm going to share our announcements, and then we will continue with our service. I invite you all to join us for our Sunday Fellowship Gathering today at 11 a.m. Our Monday Zoom house party is tomorrow at 1 p.m. This is our time during the beginning of the week to check in, connect with each other, be inspired by each other, and laugh together. Our weekly Bible study is Wednesday at 1 p.m. It's from 1 to 3. So if you'd like to go into a deeper level, a deeper understanding of Scripture, bring your Bibles and join us. Our weekly meditation service is Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. In this sacred meditation, we come together to relax and commune in the presence of God together. We are having our town hall meeting next Sunday, June 27th at 11 a.m. It will take the the, the place of our Sunday fellowship gathering. This will be to discuss our plan to resume in-person services within our church, which will be very soon. I hope that you all will be able to join us. So remember, mark your calendars for our town hall meeting next Sunday at 11 a.m. Our next Youth Sunday service is also next Sunday at 1 p.m. This service is for children ages 5 to 11. If you have any questions regarding this service, feel free to call Sharon Clays at youth at unityfh.com. The next critical conversation meeting is next Monday at 7 p.m. I invite you all to join us. Everybody's welcome. I want to thank all of you who have been participating in our critical conversations, especially those of you who've been, cre- who've been participating since last year and have continued to be a part of this conversation. You have been truly making a difference by being beacons of love and understanding and also by demonstrating in our church the very thing that needs to happen to create healing in this world. And that is having a conversation with each other. Blacks and whites coming together to love and understand each other. So thank you for that. It has been truly a blessing for me to experience this with you all and to follow God in doing my part in leading our church to do our part in healing systemic racism in our United States. If you feel led, invite others to join us, even if they're at other churches. The more more people we bring together, the bigger of a wave we send out into the world. So thank you all again for participating with me in this way of showing our showing up and showing our part of being loving and compassionate spirit filled um, participants in this world. There will be no women's group, men's group, critical conversation or family trivia night in July and August. These activities will continue and will resume in September after Labor Day. For the links to all of our events, Feel free to visit our website, which is unityfh.com. And also, if you'd like to receive our email blast, when you go to our website, scroll down to the bottom of the home page, fill out that form, and click on the submit button. If you would like to become a member of our beautiful spiritual community, or if you need to renew your membership for this year, Feel free to go to our website on the home page, click on About Us, fill out the membership form that is there, and click on the Submit button on the bottom of that form, and you will have become a new member 
or you will have renewed your membership at our church. <laughs> to schedule an appointment with me, to talk with me, or for prayer, please feel free to email me at seniorminister at unityfh.com or call me at 248-737-9191. Leave a message if I don't answer. I will call you back. My office hours are Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Wednesdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You may also email your prayer requests to the prayer ministry, which that email is prayer min- prayerchaplains at unityfh.com. Again, that's prayerchaplains at unityfh.com. After your prayer requests have been prayed over, they will be sent to Silent Unity to be held in prayer for 30 days. Thank you, Eileen Lindbergh and Roxanne Berry, who are our prayer chaplains for your sacred commu- com- uh, service to our spiritual community. I truly appreciate it. I really, really do. This concludes our announcements for today's service. And now as we join our music team in singing Shirley to Presence. Let us open our minds and our hearts to hear the daily word and for our opening prayer. The daily word for today, Father's Day, June 20th, 2021, is Father's Love. I give thanks for my Father and all expressions of fatherly love. Will you affirm that with me, please? I give thanks for my Father and all expressions of fatherly love. And the message reads, I treasure my childhood memories of feeling safe when my father or a father figure in my life was nearby. I remember my father's encouragement as I was learning to ride a bike, as we explored the wonders of nature together, and as he taught me to use money wisely. Even when I made youthful mistakes, my father's sometimes stern but always wise judgment helped me find the way back to my right path. I give thanks for both the sacred human and the unfolding of God within my Father and everyone who has blessed me with fatherly love. Today I pray for my Father and for all fathers, affirming for each of them growing wisdom, understanding, and willingness to nurture others with a Father's encouraging love. The scripture for today's daily word comes from John Chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Let us pray. So I invite you to gently close your eyes with me. Bring your attention down into the center of your heart. Take take a deep breath. And just let yourself tune into the peace within your heart center. And God, as we acknowledge that you are that one power and that one presence that is active in our lives and in the universe, God, the good omnipotent, 
We also acknowledge that because we are one with you, we are good as well. Right now, we affirm that every father and father figure in this attending this service right now is blessed and that we are grateful for the way that you are that absolute father in our lives. We also acknowledge that the Christ within us is bringing us into having the eyes to see and the ears to hear as we receive and take in your message for today and experience how we are to use it in our life and follow your guidance as we go out and be the presence of your word in our lives. Thank you, God, for your mighty gift of love that loves no matter what. And we lift this prayer in the mighty name and nature of that indwelling Christ within. Thank you, Christ. Thank you, God. Amen. And now let us affirm our statement of being together. God is all, both invisible and visible, one presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life perfect love, and perfect substance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. And now let's, let us acknowledge our U of H growth affirmation together. We give thanks for our expansive congregation that fills our halls, sanctuary, and classrooms with seekers of unity truth fills our hearts with love and joy, and provides us with all of the necessary resources to co-create a loving and compassionate spirit-filled world. Thank you for affirming that with me. And now we're going to have our first special song entitled A Praying Spirit. It will be led by Bernard, and then I will be back with our message for today.
Wow, Bernard, I love that song. You all did such an amazing job with that. And thank you, Lauren, for the video that went with it. I love, as usual, amazing song, amazing performance, amazing video, and amazing music team as well. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Some more. <laughs> oh, man. So this has been a powerful um, last uh, couple of days for me as I prepared myself to speak today for Father's Day. And the title of today's talk is The Father's House. And as I sat and meditated with God on what scriptures to use for this talk, I was led to the parable of the lost son, which Jesus tells, which we read Jesus sharing this parable in Luke 15, Luke chapter 15. What I love about Jesus and the way he taught is that he always found a way to teach that will catch the attention of the people he was talking to at the time. And so parables are stories that illustrate a specific truth. And Jesus was a master at telling parables because he would always take and tell parables that usually had some significance to the lives of those who he was speaking to. So he would take real life situations of those who he was speaking to in the place that they were living in the circumstances they were in. And he'd take those real life circumstances and show them how the lesson can be demonstrated in there in that situation, in that circumstance or in that, that, um, that story. And the beautiful part about how clever he is, is that through these parables, Jesus invoked the power of imagination. He invoked the power of imagination for them to start to create the scenarios in their minds and see how the lessons that he was teaching, the truth that he was teaching, the wisdom that he was giving, the spiritual understanding that he was awakening up in their minds, how they could take it and use it in their lives after they heard the parable, which was connected and prevalent to the lives they were living at the time. Jesus was a bad mamma jamma to me. <laughs> He was a sweet business, definitely a way sure. And I truly believe that Jesus is God's greatest gift to us, along with the, the presence and the awareness to choose to have a deep relationship with God through following the example God gave us through Jesus. And so the beautiful thing about being able to use our spiritual imagination at the time was that he invoked in them the power to shift their own lives, to change their own lives through the parables and the other ways that Jesus taught as well. So I'm going to read the, the, this parable of the lost son, which other versions might say the prodigal son. And this is Luke chapter 15, verse 11 uh, that I'm starting at. And here Jesus is illustrating how um, important it is to go after and seek the one that was lost. And this is one of the, he had already shared two other parables about going after someone or something, a, a, a soul that is lost. And here he continues. It says, to illustrate the point further, Jesus told this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, his younger son packed up his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man began to became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. 
Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still long uh, away off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to him, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Give a, get a ring from, for his finger and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf he, we have been fattening. We must celebrate a, with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Now, the interesting thing about this is that as Jesus is talk, uh, telling this story, I'm listening. Nowhere in this version do I see where Jesus calls this young man the prodigal son or anything like that. So I was wondering where in here um, the, the prodigal son is. And there have been a, several of us who have connected the prodigal son to the persons who go out and are reckless or go against uh, the, your parents' advice or just go out and squander your, your, your money or just, just do will, live willy-nilly. But I looked up what prodigal meant. Prodigal does mean spending money or resources freely and rec recklessly. It also means wastefully extravagant. But the second meaning that I saw here says having or giving something on a lavish scale. So the prodigal son isn't the, isn't the only one who was uh, coming from an excessive consciousness or lavishly uh, presenting him uh, a way of beha a behavior because his father, when he asked his father for his inheritance, his father went ahead and did it right away. He didn't make his son earn it or anything like that. He didn't even tell his son the weight. He just freely gave it to him. And the other thing is when his son came home, while his son was far away, he saw his son coming. And the interesting thing is, as I was reading this, I imagined if my son or my daughter was far away, if I would recognize them. And I realized that I would. I know my son's walk. I know my son's stand. I know my son's build, his physique. I know the same with my daughter as well. I would picture them. I would um, recognize them from far off as well. He recognized his son, and he also could tell by the way his son was walking that his son had, it was feeling ashamed and upset at himself. He runs to his son and hugs his son. Now, as his son is, has squandered everything away, and then he decides to go ahead and uh, hire himself to, to be help at a farm, and while he's sitting there feeding these pigs and gets hungry enough to start pondering, eating the pig's food, he realizes that in his father's house are, are servants who are well-fed and have even more to spare. And he decides to go home. That is an interesting thing when he comes to himself, when, when he realizes, uh, when he finally came to his senses means he comes to the realization that when I was at home, I had everything I need. And not only did I have everything my, I needed, even my servants have everything they need. Now he is scheming still here because he said he's going to go home and tell his father that he's not worthy of being his son anymore, but he's doing it because he wants to eat, not because he's upset, he's uh, repentant for his behavior. He wants to be able to get back home, and he, want, and he realizes that because of his behavior, maybe his father may not think of him as his son anymore, but at least his father would think of him as a servant, and he could still get home and be able to eat. So he's still conniving in his mind and coming from a consciousness of the human perspective that led him away from his father's house in the first place. And the father's house represents Christ consciousness. It represents your relationship with God. It represents your awareness of the divine within you. It represents spiritual consciousness that you are living from the inside out. And when he went off to a faraway distant land, 
or here it says a distant land. When he went to a distant land, it means moving away. Everything you doing, everything the, that everything you do, everything you say, your actions, all of it is caught up in satisfying the flesh and none of it is identifying or acknowledging the Christ within you. When you are in a distant land, you are, are as far away of the consciousness of God as you can get. You are fully distracted and fully engrossed in that distraction from the presence of God. And when he came to himself, he became aware of and remembered what he experienced when he was in the father's house and decided to go back home. The beautiful thing is the moment you start going back home, God will meet you right where you are. He was far away when his father recognized him and his father ran to him. He didn't walk. His father ran to him and hugged him and embraced him and kissed him. And it took him in just the way he was. There is nothing that we have to do to get got to, to get back in God's graces, except shift our consciousness to God and God will accept us right where we are. Open arms, embracing us and bringing us back in. And that's what happened here. A lot of us feel ashamed when we make mistakes and we don't want to go back and say to our fathers or our, our um, father figures um, or those who we might have quote unquote sinned against or been upset of or go, went against or made mistakes. Um, and, and, it, and it may be difficult to do that. But I promise you this, in the presence of God, you don't ever have to worry about being shunned or criticized or ridiculed. God will accept you right where you are. This young man was stinky. He had no shoes on his feet. He was filthy. And his father hugged him just the way he was. God embraces us just the way we are. Now, when the father gave him a, ro a robe, the finest robe in the house, which is the awareness of what you get. You are when you live from the consciousness of the Christ within. You are tapped into. All things abundant in the world. And it's important for us to remember that when he was at home, he had everything he needed. He was in the care of his father. He had all the food he needed. He had all the resources he needed. He had the best clothes. He had everything. And when his father has the servant, give him the robe and put the robe on him. What it represents is coming back into the identity. He was igno his igno putting a robe over you is was given to your favorite. He received his, he stepped back into his identity as a child of his father. And when we come back home to our awareness, when we come back to our senses of stepping into meditation, prayer, and going back into our relationship with God, resuming our relationship with God, I promise you, God is always having a relationship with us. It is just up to us to re respond by having a relationship back with God. God will step you back into your identity of who you are as a child of God. And it will activate the vitality inside of you and reinvigorate you and recharge you with the life force that you are. The other thing is that the father put a ring on his finger. The ring represents your authority. Back then, the rings that they had had a, a, a symbol on them that you did. You pierced it into you pu pushed it into wax and then you stuck it on a letter to keep the close that letter that signified the emblem of the house. It, get, it symbol, uh, symbolized the authority of that household. So he was given back his authority. When we are caught up in the world of the human and, we're, and we get caught up in the world of humans so much that we end up using out and squandering our resources, trying to do it on our own, and we end up experiencing lack consciousness and even to some degree illness, we have forgotten our authority. We have forgotten the, pop, the spiritual power of dominion that we have. We've forgotten that we have the authority and responsibility to step into the consciousness of God, to master our own mind, and to have control over our thoughts 
and our words and our actions and our beliefs to have control over our consciousness. This man, this young man's control had no control over his consciousness. He just went and overspent and did everything to satisfy his flesh. And he ended up with nothing. But his father, when he came back, gave him back the authority. Whenever we leave God's presence and come back, I promise you, you step right back into your authority. God receives you with open arms and God, and God allows your mind to open back up to the authority that you have as a child of God. And then the sandals represent spiritual understanding, a strengthening of the spiritual understanding, but it also represents dignity because slaves walked with no sandals. And this, this son was willing to go back to be a slave for his father in order to eat. But when he was hugged by his father, can you imagine being embraced by your father when you've done all, all the things that you could do wrong in your life and yet you are still embraced just as you are? Can you imagine God embracing you? How deeply moved you will feel knowing that no matter what, you are still loved as the child that God created you to be, that all God sees is the Christ in you and the love in you. And that is all that is invoked in God in you is to embrace you and pull you in deeply and for you to understand more fully who you are and, as, and, and you step back into your dignity as a child of God, as an individualized expression of God. I remember when I was struggling with, am I going to be a minister and telling God I've done all these things wrong. And God told me that in God, in the process lies my perfection. I don't have to be perfect because I was being called to be a minister for God. And that through my mistakes, God still loved me no matter what. And that as I move into my perfection, it will be a process that moves me. Becoming means that your being is coming into fruition. So I am coming into my being because we're human beings. We're human and we're spiritual beings at the same time. Our being is coming into fruition. And the more we come back home to the father's house, the more we realize that and step into a deeper understanding of it and walk in dignity, knowing it. And that's what this son did. That's what this son did. And the fatted calf represents the spiritual strengthening of the, that occurs when you return to the father's house. He got, he was able to eat and be nourished and celebration is the joy that you feel when you tap back in and you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt that God loves you, no matter what you've done, that God loves you just for you. You don't have to do anything to prove to God to love you. You don't have to do anything to please God and make God love you. You don't have to beg for God's love. Some people say, well, God, if you do this for me, then, uh, then I mean, if, if, yeah, if you do this for me, then I'll do this for you. This little bo this young boy was saying, I will be your servant. If you let me back in your house, you don't have to do any of that for God. You don't have to feel shameful. You don't have to feel less than you don't have to feel any of that. God sees it in your heart and God's telling you, I love you anyway. And that is how we are to love other people in the world as well. We are to love them anyway. I remember when I was younger, when I was 16 and I was driving the van, we had just got my father, had just bought my mom a brand new van and I had learned, just learned how to uh, drive. I was about to be 17 and my dad, and they let me go get some pizza. And I accidentally backed into a pole and I was so afraid of how my father was going to respond to me because it, it left a mark in the bumper and it left yellow, you know, scratched up the paint. And I was so nervous. I sat there praying, Lord, please don't let my father hurt me. And my father wasn't the type of father that were hurt, but my heart felt so bad and I felt so damaged and like just so uh, upset at myself for messing up my mother's van. But when I got home and I came to the door and I told my father and I was crying, he said, well, are you okay? And I said, yes. He said, Kelly, we can fix the van. We can't get another you. That's how God feels about you. That who you are 
is what matters. Who God created you to be, who you are becoming is what matters. So whatever you've done in this world, God still meets you where you are. And God is asking us to love people where we know their Christ's identity, where we treat them with the authority that they have as a child of God. And we treat them with dignity. And we also remember that they have the spiritual strengthening in them and the spiritual understanding that God is inside of them. We are called to love each other as brothers and sisters in God. As God loves us to love, we are called to love from the coming from the father's house towards each other. The, the older brother was angry when he found out that his brother came home and he was being celebrated. The first brother, the younger brother represents being caught up in sense consciousness, human consciousness, your appetites and passions of the flesh. The older brother represents the judgment part of us, the religious moral part of us that goes into self-righteousness. When we see someone doing something wrong and we start to judge them and point a finger at them, the father didn't point a finger and God doesn't point a finger. The father opened his arms and embraced and the father opens his, his, his uh, God's arms and embraces us as well. And the truth. And then when the father saw the brother, the older brother, angry and upset about the way he was treating his younger brother, the father said, you were here all along. You never left me. You never, you were never lost by leaving my household. You had everything that is mine is yours. And he, it, 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 I can just imagine it dawning on him. All I had to do was ask. He said, you didn't uh, cut, uh, use a cow for, uh, 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 give me a, a goat for my, for, for a feast for my friends. But you did it for him and he squandered all his money. His father said, you didn't ask. All that was mine was yours. I'm here to tell you, you will not G-E-T unless you A-S-K. And God is waiting there. God is there waiting to give it to you. The greatest father in the world. All we got to do is step back into the father's house. Come into the consciousness of God. Love God even more deeply with all of your heart, mind, and soul. And ask how God, how, how am I to love you, God? How am I to love me? How am I to love others? Ask and God will show you. Ask what it is that God has for you and God will show you. Seek it out where God shows you to seek. Seek out opportunities to to, for your good, to find your good, seek out opportunities where God will show you how to love other people and then knock and the door should be open. Knock on all the doors that are blocking you from fully experiencing the presence of God's love. Let go of self-condemnation. Let go of self-righteousness. Let yourself be loved by God and let yourself be open to love others the same way God loves you to love yourself and others the same way God loves you. And I promise you, you will be found. It wasn't just a young boy that left that was lost. His brother was lost too. His brother was in the father's house living from self-righteousness. He was lost too. You can be in unity caught up in judging and still be lost. You can be out in the world of consciousness, caught up in honoring your flesh and still be lost. God is saying, come to me and I will love you fully. Come home to the father's house and I will love you fully. And I will teach you how to love yourself and how to love me and how to love others. I challenge us today to go back home to the father's house, to ask God to show you how to love even more deeply because I promise you, you will never, ever, ever be able to love as deeply as God does. But I promise you, if you ask, God will show you how to get as close to it as you can, as close to loving God, the way God loves you, as close to loving yourself, the way God loves you and as close to loving others, the way God loves them. I sent my, my, I sent my husband, I sent Howard, and my kids a text when I got that aha that I will never be able to love you the way God does. But I will spend the rest of my life trying to get as close to it as I can. 
And I can only do that when I dwell in the Father's house, when I live in the Father's house. I challenge you to do the same. Seek to love others. Seek to love God, yourself, and others as closely as you can to the way God loves you. And go home to the Father's house so you can learn how to do it. Thank you, God. Amen. <laughs> so now, let's go into our Giving Righteously segment. Oh, come on. I'm so touched right now. Bring forth the idea of the donation God has for you to give right now. Let God meet you right where you are. And let's affirm our love offering blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Amen. And for those of you who are giving online, please go to unityfh.com. You can give through credit card, debit card, or PayPal. Remember when you make your purchases, start making your purchases through smile.amazon.com and link it to Unity of Farmington Hills if you, if you haven't already. Because your per when you make your purchases, Amazon will send proceeds to Unity of Farmington Hills in the form of donations. If you're sending in a check as a donation, send it to 32 Unity of Farmington Hills, 32500 West 13 Mile Road, Farmington Hills, Michigan, 48334. If you're deciding to give to the Angel Fund, which is this amazing benevolent fund that we've created for those in our Unity family who might be in financial need. When you go to the donate button, scroll down to where it says Angel Fund and click on that and you can donate. You, you can make an additional donation to the Angel Fund. And for those of you who are sending in a check for it, remember to signify to us De uh, designated on your check. If you want to apply for the a su support from the Angel Fund, you may send me a request for the request for uh, the application for it. And you can send it to senior minister at unityfh.com. And I will help you, the uh, prayer chaplains and I will help you through this process it is a confidential process and we are here to help and I'm grateful for every single way that you guys have opened your hearts to give in a form of tithing of your time your treasure and your talents I saw how you all came out for the cleanup I saw how you all shared your a treasure for the hunger fun, uh the hunger walk and last week for I mean last year for the adoptive family you guys are just so amazing God's love is truly coming through you. I'm grateful for that, to be a part of this spiritual community. So now we're going to have our second, our second spe special song entitled The Father's House. And that's what inspired the title of this talk. And it'll be led by Lauren and Laurel. And then I will be back with our closing prayer segment. I'll see you in a little bit.
I loved that song and that song kind of inspired the title of our talk. Actually, it did inspire the title of our talk for today's service. Thank you, Laurel and Lauren for leading that. Thank you all for your performances. It was amazing and beautiful. And Lauren, thank you for showing the beautiful church unity churches that uh, represent the physical expression of the father's house. And as you sang and moved into our consciousness, of imagining the spiritual expression of the Father's house. That's our spirit, Christ consciousness. That is your Father's house, the consciousness inside of you. So now let us move into preparing for our virtual prayer circle. So bring forth in your mind the thought of who you'd like to pray for. And gently close your eyes with me and take a deep breath. Allow your consciousness to flow back down into your heart center. Tapping into the consciousness of God within you. And now think forth or call forth the name of those you are praying with, even if it is yourself. And God, as we pray for these people who we are concerned about, we pray from the consciousness of your household, your consciousness of the Christ within, the Father's house within us. And the Christ in us taps into the Christ in everyone we're praying with. Affirming and acknowledging that you're, uh, you are working within each and every one of their consciousness. You are bringing forth the answer to their prayer. And you are doing it in your divine timing. And so we thank you for the work you are doing behind the scenes in everyone's lives. And the work that you are doing in our lives as well. In the lives of everyone in attendance and in the lives of everyone connected to Unity of Farmington Hills. I thank you, God, for those who have helped me put this service together, for blessing each and every one of them. And I thank you, God, for not only blessing Unity of Farmington Hills, but for blessing the world. In the mighty name and nature of that indwelling Christ, we pray. Amen. And now let us affirm our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Oh my goodness. For those of you who are joining me this um, right after this service for our Sunday fellowship gathering, I will see you in a little bit. For those of you who are not, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Happy Father's Day to you all and enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you next week for our Sunday service and for our town hall meeting. And as I said earlier today, I am Rev. Reverend Kelly Kincaid, and it has been a joy and a pleasure to be here with you all. Let us close by singing the peace song with our music team. Until I see you again, have a beautiful, beautiful week. Bye-bye. <laughs>